One of the most important pieces of laboratory equipment that you will encounter is the electronic balance. Balances have been used since antiquity to weigh things. Maybe your instructor has seen a balance such as this one, or even used a balance like this. If they have, they may have also used a calculator like this, a classic, or even a slide rule. No batteries in all business. Never seen a slide rule before? We put men on the moon with slide rules. Suck it, Snapchat. Hey, stop all this talking and let's get to work. Will somebody please take off my blindfold? I can't see anything. Wendy and Ileana are smiling because they're in the lab and they're lab partners forever. They're going to show us how to use the balance. Let's take a few moments to identify some of the buttons on the balance. First, there is the zero tear button. This is the one that you're going to use the most often. Don't ever touch the calibration button and also make sure that the correct units are being measured. The units should be grams. Wendy is a conscientious student. Notice that she is preparing a table to record her data ahead of time. She has read the lab manual and is ready to go. Before we start, Ileana is going to zero the balance. Remember, we never put any reagents directly onto the balance pan. Ileana will measure the reagent into the beaker. Ileana places the beaker onto the balance pan to record its mass. Wendy has set up the data table to account for the mass of the empty beaker. Ileana carefully opens the balance box, places the beaker inside, and then closes it. This keeps any air movement through the lab from altering the measurement of the balance. She waits for a moment for the balance reading to settle down. Remember, the last digit is the uncertain digit. You may get some fluctuation in that digit, but that is normal. Choose the value that seems to be the most consistent. Notice that Wendy has her lab notebook right at the balance. Always record your data directly into the lab notebook. Don't use scraps of paper or paper towels or any other ways of recording data outside of your lab notebook. Wendy can now record the mass of the beaker plus the mass of the reagent that was placed into the beaker. To figure out the mass of the reagent placed in the beaker, she can simply do some subtraction, subtracting the mass of the empty beaker from the mass of the full beaker. Careful mass measurements are the foundation of good laboratory work. Wendy has a new partner, Ash. They need to weigh some things. This time, instead of weighing into a beaker, we're going to weigh onto a piece of weighing paper. Also, this time we're going to use the tear, or zero button, to zero out the mass of the weighing paper. So you will notice that in Wendy's laboratory notebook, there is no space for the mass of the weighing paper. To help the reagent stay on the weighing paper, Ash is carefully folding it twice, kind of like a taco in order to create a pocket for the reagent to stay on the paper and make it easier to manipulate. Now, when the weighing paper is on the balance pan, Ash hits the zero or the tear button, and this will re-zero the balance with the weighing paper on the pan. Notice how the reading is zero and the weighing paper is on the balance pan. Now anything that is added to the weighing paper will be measured by the balance. After Ash figures out which hand he's going to use, he carefully transfers the reagent from the container onto the paper on the balance. Be extra careful not to spill reagent into the balance pan area. Using the tear function, the subtraction is done for you, and the reading on the balance is the mass of the reagent that was transferred to the paper. You're ready to go. Ash and Wendy are happy chemistry students. But what about Ileana? Why is there no closure with this video?